now I bet we have sound. You were here? Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Never okay. mind. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think we have sound now. I bet we do now. We are fixed. Yes. Anyway. Okay. Where, where were we? Where were we? Let's start again. Hello, everybody. <laughs> if, if you don't know who we are, <laughs> <laughs> if you're new to Season Victory Global Webcast, and you, study and webcast. you don't know how to read lips. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't. Anyway. Um, well, why don't you do the introduction? Good evening. We're so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us on Seeds of Victory Global Bible Study webcast. This is January the 8th, yes, 2019 it is. already. And as he said before, when you could not hear, <laughs> Happy New Year yes. and welcome. We're yes. glad you're here. It's a blessing to have you all with us. And... What else? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, again, we had a great Christmas. We hope you did. Mm -hmm. um, I was sharing about um, the fact that we went to Lincoln, New Mexico, and uh, stayed at a and b and just had marvelous hosts, met a, just a really neat couple, and mm -hmm. they allowed us to spend time with them on Christmas Day, mm -hmm. and uh, they actually had us for Christmas dinner. Um, because they offered to they to offered make to cook dinner for us. Yeah, yeah, and it wasn't. I mean, that wasn't in the price. You know, no, it's yeah. it's a B and B. Well, let me give the backstory. All right, give the backstory. Uh, we, he had booked through Airbnb, and of course, then you begin to email with your host, you know, to find out specifics, and and uh, so he wrote to her and said. Uh, do we need to make other plans for Christmas morning so you can be with your family for Christmas, you know, for breakfast? And she said, absolutely not. Uh, we'll make breakfast for you. And then she wrote back and wanted to know if we wanted her to make Christmas dinner. We said, no, 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 we're not going to make those people make Christmas dinner for us. So I went to H-E-B and I got a variety of cheeses and crackers and we loaded it in the ice chest, and I said, we're having cheese and crackers for Christmas. Yay! <laughs> because there was nowhere to eat. And so I thought, well, you know, this is what we'll do. Well, at breakfast that morning, this is a delightful couple, delightful people that are so interesting. They have as much history as Lincoln County does. Yeah. But anyway, we visited with them for five hours at bre after breakfast. Mm -hmm. And finally she said, well, I better go get my ham on for dinner. She <laughs> said, won't y'all please join us for, for Christmas dinner? Well, yeah, we sat there all day long and visited mm -hmm. and talked and had Christmas dinner. And it was very nice. Very it was very enjoyable. good. Very yes, good. it was. We've got a group. Oh, my goodness. And do we have sound? Can you do hear us? Do we have sound? Let's see. Uh, now we can hear, Lisa says. We have... Okay. Lisa. Yay. Yay. Hey, girl. And we have Robert Garcia. Wow. Hey, brother. I'm glad Yay. you made it. And we have Lucille. Wow. Uh, Good. Lucille said, Kenna can fix it. He can fix anything. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, she thank you, for, thank you for that vote of confidence. <laughs> and Robert Davis is here. I'm going to tell you how complicated this was, Lucille. I forgot to turn the PA on. So just, <laughs> that just, <laughs> just, just so that you know that it wasn't all that. Was, I didn't have to like rewire the whole thing or anything. So. Oh, my goodness. And uh, Lucille hey, Robert, says, Robert, I'm glad you're here. Yes, we're glad you are here. Uh, Lucille says, too bad we can't read lips. Um, Lisa <laughs> says, we can hear now. Good evening, everyone. Um, and now Lucille's computer is <laughs> looping. Okay. Um, I can't fix that. Can't fix that. Mm -hmm. Ungers are here. Good. Yay! Hey, guys. And let's <clears throat> see. Where are we now? Robert Garcia. Uh, Ungers, yes, sound, Robert, Lisa, Verl from Graham America. Hi, Yay. Graham America. Yay, Verl, what day do you leave for Guatemala? I could not remember, and I didn't look in my messages with you to see when you leave, but in my head, I think you leave this week. But that may not He be. told me, but I don't remember. He told you? Yeah. 
and do we want couple to, of days to announce what we're doing with you her? want to yeah we are going to Romania. Yes, we're with going to Romania with Brother Verl. Brother Verl. Adventures with Verl. Yeah. Uh, we'll leave here. Easter Sunday is April the 21st. And we will leave the next morning and go to Romania. Mm -hmm. And come back on May the 2nd or Second. 3rd. Second. Something like that. And... We are so excited to get to go do this. We're going to go minister to the pastors and their wives. Mm -hmm. And I'll have the opportunity to help some That's of the right. praise mm -hmm. and worship leaders with learning how to flow with the Spirit of God. So we're pretty excited about this. Mm -hmm. uh, so pray for us. Keep praying for us every mm -hmm. day. And Amen. pray for Verl. He's fixing to go to Guatemala. Yep. Amen. Fly out next Wednesday. Okay, so next Wednesday would be today's eighth and ninth. That'd be the sixteenth. He's leaving. That's on Zane's birthday. So, and Lucille is back and no spooling. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Good, good. So I think we've covered all, all the right. ground we need to cover. It's time to. Well, get since we since we had no sound, let me just go back and say, uh, the thirtieth of December, I began a series. And um, the Lord very seldom lets me know the title of a series. Uh, I'll, I may get the, you know, the title of a message, but very seldom does he let me know what the series is going to be or really what the subject is going to be. The thing ordinarily just develops from one week to the next and it comes out, oh, this is that. And, uh, but... He really impressed me a couple of weeks ago to begin talking about prayer and wisdom. So this is going to be the prayer and wisdom series. The title of the message is The Administration of the Spirit. Uh, and and uh, you need to realize that, that uh, because of the holidays, uh, the webcast is going to be uh, a week behind. And so the second part of this is already done. And I'm going to have trouble staying with all of it because I was sitting on the couch yesterday and the Lord dropped in my spirit what I'm going to do next Sunday. So you've got all so three I got of them three, rolling around. In I got spirit. all three of them rolling around. So anyway, mm -hmm. um, and it was very interesting because that, that doesn't happen either. But I sat there on the couch yesterday morning and just did my notes, which I usually come up here and lock away on Saturdays. That's an extremely, I, w I was started to say rare, in all of the years we've been doing this, I never remember you having your notes dead, ready the day after <laughs> Yeah, on a Monday. On yeah. a Monday. Yeah, every. On, on the rare occasion, he'll get his notes done on a Thursday, uh, less rare on a Friday. Generally, on Saturday, you do your notes. And he came out of his study yesterday, and he said, I've got my notes done for Sunday. And I'm what? <laughs> mm -hmm. Already? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So this is something the Lord is really uh, mm -hmm. wanting us to hear. The only time that has ever happened, and it wasn't for Sunday, it was Tuesday webcast. God did a special message here just a few weeks ago. Uh, special mes message for webcast and I got that on Monday uh, but Sundays it doesn't happen anyhow God is doing some things and I can count on one hand the times that I've taught specifically on prayer uh, I have taught on it and uh, when we were de dealing doing LCU uh, I taught on prayer because it was a course I had to teach the course Mm -hmm. But this is going going a very going to go a very very different direction as we get over into this. Anyhow, we're going to begin tonight with what I taught on December thirtieth, and I just posted uh, the message that I did Sunday on the what was that sixth, mm -hmm. and I posted that. That's already online, so you can get a sneak preview for next Tuesday if you want. Anyhow, okay. you guys ready? Let's pray. Father, we come before you. We thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation being made manifest 
tonight. I thank you that you give us all enlightenment in Jesus' name. Yes, Amen. Amen. I want you to go with me, please, to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and also go ahead and go to Romans chapter 10. Well, while they're doing that, Miss <clears throat> Diane is here. Hey, girl, I'm glad you made it. Excellent. And Burl says, I'm excited that you guys are going to Transylvania. Yes, I'm excited you're going to guacamole. <laughs> uh. And then he says, well, you already have a cross. Just make sure to take a patch of garlic. <laughs> I'll just, brother, I'll just have I'll just have Cindy cook something. She puts garlic in everything. Onions and, and garlic. And How not can any, you cook without not it? Not any vampires coming to our house. Even Julia Child said you can't yeah. cook without. No, yeah. I I think that's cool, brother, and and praying for you to be healthy, wealthy, and wise as you go to Guatemala. I think it's yes. going to be a very good time down there for you. And Miss Tina Marie is here. Good. She said they are here. Good. 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 Good, good. All right, let's do it. Yeah, because at the end of the three. at the end of tonight, I'm going to share a little bit what I shared with you, Tina, and I'll explain why here uh, as we get to it. But at the end of the message, I want to share. I'm going to share what I shared with you out of Mark five today. So anyway, Second Corinthians chapter three. Let's begin with verse five. Paul said. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who hath made us able ministers of the New Testament or the New Covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit giveth life. But if the, the ministration, the King James has ministration, and I want you to take note, you may have this in your translation, but a better translation of this word would be administration. And it's used four times in the next couple of verses that we're going to read here. But if the administration of death, written and engraven in stones, now what is that? That's the law. The administration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. How shall not the, the administration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the administration of condemnation be glory, much more does the administration of righteousness excel in glory. Now, we've got here in these verses four different administrations. You have the administration of death. You have the administration of condemnation. You have the administration of the Spirit. You have the administration of righteousness. Now, the administration of condemnation and the administration of death are all one and the same. Both of them come under the heading of the law. The administration of the Spirit and the administration of righteousness are basically one and the same. And we'll go into this in more detail as we get further into this series. But for the time being, uh, let me just say that basically they are one and the same. Both of them come under the heading of grace. And of course, Romans chapter 6 and verse 14 lets us know said, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law. We are not under the administration of condemnation. We are not under the administration of death. We are under grace, therefore we are under the administration of the Spirit, and we are under the administration of righteousness. Now, one of the things that I want you to take note of, and this is going to come up again later as we get over into this 
in, in more detail even tonight. Um, notice in verse 6, I just, I just want you to take note of this because it will come back around later. Verse 6 says, Who has made us able ministers of the New Testament or of the New Covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills. Now the King James says, but the Spirit gives life. Now the literal Greek text says, but the Spirit quickens. The Spirit quickens. Just take note of that because it's going to come up again later. And Jesus said in John 6.63, he said, it is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, hold your place there in 2 Corinthians and go with me now to Romans chapter 10. Miss Francis is here. Good. Hello, Miss Francis. I am so glad you made it. Thank you for being here. I'm going to go into some things Sunday that I actually learned from her. And then next Tuesday week, since we're a week behind, I'm going to share some things that I learned from Miss Francis. So it's going to be good. That you're at Believer's Convention? Uh, um, maybe that's when she told me. I don't remember. I don't remember. So, uh, but I'll share it. It'll be, a, since we're behind again, it'll be two weeks from tonight. Anyway, stay tuned. So you stay don't miss tuned. Anything. Yes, don't miss it. <laughs> Amen. All right. Romans chapter 10. We got anything else online? Mm -mm. Okay. I told you Tina and Jake are here. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, Romans chapter 10. We're going to read very familiar verse of scripture but we're going to look at the administration of righteousness for just a moment we'll come back and talk more about the administration of the spirit again they work together they're fundamentally one and the same but romans chapter 10 verse 9 you all know it many of you were born again on this passage it says if you will confess with your mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved or be delivered. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, as we get into this, you're going to realize more and more about the importance of, of words, even in even in these two verses, confession is mentioned two times. Believing is mentioned once, and so uh, confession is very important. And in these two verses, confession is mentioned first. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, now. Um, notice what he said here. Verse 10, he said, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation or unto deliverance. Now I want you to notice something here. Verse 9, or verse 10. Well, let's read verse 9. Read down into it again. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, or confess that Jesus is Lord, and shall believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You believe in your heart, you say with your mouth, you shall be saved. But in the 10th verse, he inserts righteousness. For with the heart... Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, <clears throat> for where we're going, I want this I want this pattern in your thinking. Faith 
produces righteousness. Faith produces righteousness. Righteousness empowers our words with authority. Let me say that again. Faith produces righteousness. Righteousness empowers our words with authority. Now you can see this in particular in verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation or unto deliverance. Why, why is it our mouth produces deliverance? Because righteousness empowers our words. And it's all rooted in faith in the heart. Now, faith produces righteousness. Righteousness empowers our words. Words that are empowered produce answered prayer. Let me go through this again. Faith produces righteousness. Righteousness empowers our words. Empowered words produce answered prayer. Now, <clears throat> with that said... James 5.16, you all know this. We've looked at it many times. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Why? Why is it that the prayers of a righteous man have such an effect? Because a righteous man is speaking with empowered words. Where did the righteousness come from? It came from the faith in his heart. So then, let me go through this one more time. Faith produces righteousness. Righteousness empowers our words. Empowered words produce answered prayer. Now this is really going to mean something here in a moment. This is why I'm, I'm spending the time laboring over this for just a moment. One of the things that righteousness does, I shared with you earlier that the administration of grace and the administration of righteousness, or excuse me, the administration of the Spirit and the administration of righteousness come under the heading of grace. So, let me, let me share this verse with you. Romans chapter 5 Verse 21 says that as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through. R-E-I-G and reign like a king. The Amplified says reign is a king in life. Even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, let me insert one other thing into this equation we've gotten started here. Faith 
produces righteousness. Righteousness empowers our words. Now, how does righteousness empower our words? Righteousness empowers our words by infusing grace into our mouth. Again, Romans 5.21, that as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. All right. Again, faith produces righteousness. Righteousness empowers our words with grace. Grace words that are spoken by the righteous produce answered prayer. It's important that you realize, I'm going to just throw some scriptures out here for just a moment. It's important that you realize that the grace of God is directly tied to our words. Now, we just, we just read here in Romans 10, 9, says if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You believe in your heart and you say with your mouth. Well, you guys all know Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it's the gift of God. You're saved by the words of your mouth. You're saved by grace. Why? Because grace empowers your words. Psalm 45, 2, talking about the Messiah. says, you are fairer, fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. So there's a direct connection, again, between grace and our words. Well, Jesus said here, Matthew 12, 35, a good man out of, the good, out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. Well, what produces good men speaking good words? Grace. Grace. Now, if you read into this, let me just, I didn't put it in PowerPoint. Let me... Let me go over here and read this to you. Let me back up in one verse. Verse 34 says, O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, you... you who was he talking to? He was talking to people who were under the law. And he said, how can you, being evil, speak good things? Now, why couldn't they speak good things? They weren't under grace. They were under grace. Law. You just said it. They weren't righteous. They were under law. Therefore, they were under the administration of condemnation. death, condemnation, and death. Mm -hmm. They couldn't speak good things. But under grace, when grace is poured out, when a person is under grace, 
Grace is poured into our lips. Grace is poured into our words. And our words are empowered. And a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings, brings forth, forth good, good things. things. Mm -hmm. So grace is directly connected to our words. Now, hang on to all that and go with me back over to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We got anything online? Mm -mm. Everybody's listening. Okay. I'm going over this slowly because I'm, gonna, I, I'm about to make a left turn here in a little while and I want you to be able to go with me. Second Corinthians chapter three, once again. Verse six says, Who hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life or quickens. But if the administration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the administration of the Spirit be rather glorious? Now I want you to take note of that word administration, particularly where it's talking about the administration of of the Spirit. The word administration in the Greek is diakonia. Diakonia. And if you're if you're wanting to just write down the Greek word, it's D I A K O N I A. Spelled just like it sounds. Diakonia. Diakonia. And it's the word we get our English word deacon from. Now, when you look at the ministry of the deacon, you go back to Acts chapter 6, the diacon, they were called diaconos, the deacons. And their ministry was diaconia. They were administrators. Acts chapter 6 verse 1 says, and in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily administration, diaconia. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we, whom we may appoint over this business. Now, in looking at the ministry of the deacon as the administrator, The deacons were distributors. They distributed food and goods and different things to the needy in the church. In essence, their job was to oversee and administrate distribution. Now, we come back over here to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. The exact same word is used in reference to the Spirit. The Spirit of God is a diakonos. The Spirit of God is an administrator. He is a distributor. And the Spirit of God is is the distributor of grace and utterance. Or let me make it real simple. 
He empowers our words. The Holy Spirit is the distributor of grace and utterance. Now I want to give you four areas where the Holy Ghost is the distributor of grace and utterance. We got anything online? All right. I'm going at this slowly because we're we're going into some different things here. Four different areas where the Holy Ghost distributes grace and utterance. Number one, and this isn't in any particular order, just and this is rather bro a broad outline. You could get real, you know, technical and detailed about it. But four different areas. Number one, the Holy Spirit distributes grace and utterance to preach the gospel. The Holy Ghost distributes grace and utterance to preach the gospel. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18 and 19, the Apostle Paul said this, or he, he actually had taught on the, shared about the prayer armor, and then in verse 18 he said this, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Watch verse 19. And for me. He said, pray for me. For what, Paul? Pray for me that utterance may be given unto me. One of the reasons you don't have any more powerful preaching than you do uh, with all the multiplied millions of preachers that are preaching today, the reason you don't have more power than what you do is because they are not being given utterance by the Holy Spirit. It's coming out of uh, book learning. It's coming out of education. It's coming out of uh, psychology. It's coming out of a lot of different areas. But Paul said, Pray for me that utterance may be given unto me. In other words, my words have to be empowered with grace in order to preach the gospel with any kind of impact. So one area where the Holy Ghost distributes grace and utterance is in the preaching of the gospel. Number two, the Holy Spirit di di distributes grace and utterance through the gifts of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. The Apostle Paul says this, says this to the church at Corinth. He said that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in no all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift. And the word gift there is charisma. It's the exact same word used referring to the gifts of the Spirit. And Paul said you come behind in no gift. Why? Because you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit distributes grace and utterance through the gifts. That's number two. Number three, the Holy Spirit distributes grace and utterance for conversation in our daily lives. Conversation in our daily lives. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 29 and 30. It, says, let, it said, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers, and grieve not the Holy, the Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, God whereby you're sealed unto the, the day of redemption. redemption. Words that are not grace-empowered grieve the Spirit of God. And so God gives us utterance for our daily conversation. And lastly, the Holy Ghost gives us utterance. Oh, I didn't even show it on screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> Blocked it. 
verses. I didn't even show the verses on the screen. I was too wrapped up in what I was doing. Again, let me just go back and give these to you if you didn't write them down. Ephesians 6, 18 and 19. Forgive us, folks, who have been on vacation. It's amazing what you forget. It is amazing what weeks. you forget. What yes, you, forget you get, to do you get out of sync. Mm -hmm. Again, the Holy Spirit distributes uh, utterance to preach the gospel, Ephesians 6, 18 and 19. The Holy Spirit distributes utterance, grace and utterance through the gifts of the Spirit. That's 1 Corinthians 1, 5 through 7. Number three, the Holy Ghost distributes grace and utterance for our daily lives, our daily conversations, Ephesians 4, 29 and 30. I apologize. I get wrapped up in what I'm doing. Um, number four. The Holy Ghost distributes grace and utterance through the prayer language of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to look at that. You're all familiar with it, I know, but I want to read it. In fact, go ahead and look up, please, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 1 Corinthians chapter 14, because we're going to go over there in just a moment. Go ahead and look both of those up. 1 Corinthians chapter, excuse me, Acts chapter 2 and 1 Corinthians Acts, 14. Okay. Acts 2, 1 Corinthians 14. Acts 2, 1 Corinthians 14. Nothing online? Mm -mm. They're listening. Okay. Paying attention. All right. This is good teaching. All right, here we go. Here's where we're going to begin to make a shift. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. Verse 4, you all know it. And they were all filled yes. with the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost and, and began, began to speak. speak with other tongues. Yes, amen. Amen. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, um, we've spent a lot of years ministering the Holy Ghost to people. I don't know how many people... We've laid hands on, I mean, I don't know. in the hundreds, possibly the thousands, but I know the hundreds. Mm -hmm. And um, in ministering the Holy Ghost to people, I emphasize Acts 2-4. And it says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance and what I emphasize every single time in ministering the Holy Ghost to people is I've, I've emphasized the fact that in order to receive your prayer language it doesn't begin with the Holy Spirit it begins with you it starts with you. And usually I take Acts 2, 4 and say they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began. Holy Ghost didn't begin. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They began to speak. And for those of you that have the prayer language of the Holy Ghost... You know, to pray in the Spirit requires faith. And I can say this after 40 plus years of ministering the Holy Ghost to people. If, if I can get them or you can get them to take that step of faith and begin to use their voice and begin to speak we have never failed to get the candidates filled 
with the Holy Ghost. It has never, ever failed. If we can get them to take that step of faith. And in sharing this message uh, on the 30th of December here at Victory Harvest, we had three people filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Two of them were teenagers. Mm -hmm. And as I shared Sunday, the thing that makes that exciting is teenagers aren't going to fake it for anybody. And so if, if I can get them to take that step of faith and begin to use their voice, they'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. You got something online? Lisa says some really dull knives. Uh -huh. Me. Didn't quite get that. <laughs> yeah, now I won't. I won't go into detail. But I ministered the Holy Ghost to Lisa at a home meeting, and Lisa was somewhat of a tough case. I will just say to you that I wound up chasing her around the front yard. <laughs> I did of the house where we were. Lisa, you can't say what I'm lying or not. Chased her around the front yard of the house. And ministered the Holy Ghost to her. And she got it though. Bless the Lord. <laughs> she did. She did. Yeah. But anyway, um, <laughs> if I can get them to take that step of faith, even if I have to tackle them in the front yard, <laughs> if I can get them to take that step of faith, <laughs> they'll receive the Holy Ghost. Same thing happened with, with Maria. I shared this Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, Talking about Maria. Maria, our friend in Abilene, our partner, went to conference after conference and big name hero laid hands on her and people lay hands on her. She wanted the Holy Ghost. I mean, she's a good little Baptist girl, but she wanted the Holy Ghost. And I kept telling her, I mean, for nearly two years, come see me. Well, finally, after a couple of years, she came to see me. Now, when I found out she was coming, I started praying. And I said, Lord, what is preventing her from receiving the Holy Spirit? And the Lord gave me John 16, 13. He reminded me of what Jesus said about the Holy Ghost. John 16, 13. He said, how be it when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all the truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. And the Lord brought out in this verse where it says, whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And the Lord brought this to my attention. He said, the Holy Ghost never utters anything on his own. He only utters what he hears. And the, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, I only speak what I hear the Father say or what I hear the Son say. But he said, Kenneth, you, talking about mankind, you are the ones that are in authority in this earth. And he said, I don't speak until I hear you speak first. And I realized with Maria what we had here was a situation where she was waiting on God to give her utterance and God was waiting on her to use her voice mm -hmm. and to speak. And so you had a standoff here where nothing was happening. So she came over to the house. I shared with her what the Lord had shown me. And I got her in a position where she took that step of faith. And long story short, she laid in our living room floor, shook under the power of God and prayed in tongues for 45 minutes. I mean, it, you, it, you have to get people to come to that, that place, that, that area of faith faith where they begin to step out and use their voice and the Lord told uh, the Spirit of God told me he said when I hear the sound I'll give the words and in fact when you when you study this in the Greek Acts 2 4 the the Greek text actually indicates that the words are formed in the mouth they're not formed in the mind they're formed in the mouth mm -hmm. grace is poured into your lips. 
And we'll, I can tell you, the wheels are turning. So what are you thinking about? Well, you said he's waiting for the sound. Mm -hmm. Well, on the day of Pentecost, there came a sound as of a rushing mighty mm -hmm. wind. Mm -hmm. The sound. Who were we listening to? That evangelist that worked with uh, Reinhardt. I don't remember his name. I don't remember um, either. He he basically is over that ministry now, and I'm just blanking on his name. He's a young man. A young man has powerful. Uh, they were yeah. setting up a meeting, and and the pastor there in Africa said, "Well, it'll probably be a small meeting. Uh, we'll only have about thirty thousand." <laughs> but before it was over, they had over a million, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit instructed him to simply instruct the people mm -hmm. to pray inside themselves, not to say anything out loud, but to in, just in themselves say, baptize me in your Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And told them just... Well, he told them, well, what he said to them was, I'm just, I want you to just ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He read uh, mm -hmm. uh, out of Luke 11, mm -hmm. 9 through 13, Jesus said, "All you know, your heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him." He said, "Just ask." Just ask. So He tells this million plus people, "Just ask. Just ask the Spirit of God to baptize you." And He said, "I waited and I waited. Felt like an eternity. Two minutes, three minutes, four minutes." He said in about five, six minutes, he said it sounded like in the distance just kind of a bubbling of a brook, just mm -hmm. kind of a little bubbling. And he said, and then it just began to... Is it Kalindus? Kalinda? Kalinda. 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 That's his name, I think. Mm -hmm. anyway, Daniel Kalinda. Uh, that's right. And he talked about how it grew from there and how this mass of... He said it was an ocean of people, then it began to sound like an ocean when they all began to speak in other tongues. Mm -hmm. We sat there and just oh, it was teared awesome. up. It mm -hmm. was like how awesome a thing to have been a part of that. Mm -hmm. oh, oh my goodness. Okay, we've got um, a little bit of chat right here. Lisa said, um, he's not lying. He didn't give up on me. <laughs> I walked away baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yes, he really did chase me out into the yard. I was there. Yes, he did. And at one point we said, do you think we should go out and check on them? <laughs> uh, Lucille says, oh, and Dan and Shasta are here. Hey, guys. Yay. Lucille says, makes sense that it has to come just out of the mouth rather than your mind because you don't know what you're saying exactly. and speaking right. in tongues. And we're going to get into that in but just a minute. But to give the sound to it, there came a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. Makes you wonder if that sound wasn't kind of like what happened no, with it, Kalinda. No, it was, it, well, it may have been, but actually it, what it says, the sound, there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house. It filled the house, right. Mm -hmm. So... It, so this, it was a wind. This, yeah, this was the Holy Ghost, and it, 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 didn't, it didn't say it was a wind. It said there came the sound. The sound. Mm -hmm. I mean, like a jet engine, just mm -hmm. you know. It was the Holy Spirit invading Earth, coming to. He is the member of the Godhead we deal with here <laughs> yeah. in the Earth. Holy Ghost. He, uh, okay, uh, God's presence is everywhere, but the Holy Spirit is the person in the Earth we deal with. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. I no, you. we no, you didn't. Are we you. got anything mm -hmm. else? No. Mm -mm. Um, okay. Now, said all that for a reason. Um, let me go back here. Well, I don't know that I put it in. Um, I'm not sure if I put it in or not, but I want to. No, I didn't. All right, let's go back here for just a moment. You don't need to look it up, but let me remind you.
Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you will confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth Confession is made unto salvation. Okay. Faith produces righteousness. Righteousness empowers our words. Empowered words produce answered prayer. When a person is born again, they go through this process. They have to. It's the way God set it up. When a person goes through Romans 10, 9 and 10, they receive the Lordship of Jesus over their life and they're born again. In the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they are receiving the Lordship of the Spirit the way they are received, they have already received the Lordship of Jesus. And you receive it through the exact same process. It takes faith to pray in tongues. You take that step of faith and you use your voice. But it's the exact same process. In taking that step of faith, in receiving the Lordship of the Spirit and being baptized in the Holy Spirit, you take that step of faith. Faith produces righteousness. Righteousness empowers your words with what? Grace. And you begin to speak in other tongues. And when you speak in other tongues, it produces answered prayer. It's the exact same process. And as I said to you before, you guys that speak in other tongues, you already know you have to speak in tongues by faith. There's no, uh, there's no way around it. And so, let's go back to um, James chapter 5. You don't have to look it up. James 5, 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, let me tell you something. If that's true, praying in English or whatever it may be, how much more is that true praying in the Holy Ghost? When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you are a righteous man praying an effectual, fervent prayer. And here James said, it will avail much. Now, um, Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So when they wondered at the gracious words that proceeded out of Jesus' mouth. Mm -hmm. The power and authority... was what made them realize it was gracious words. They didn't realize it was gracious words. That's Luke's commentary. Okay. He stood up and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised, preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book, he gave it again to the minister and sat down. The eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing. 
And all of them wondered at the gracious words or words of grace that proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? And, and they, Luke said he spoke words of grace, which is exactly what they did, what he did. But they didn't hear it as words of grace. They heard it as words of ego. Uh, they heard it as words that was just totally beyond their comprehension. <laughs> they couldn't grasp the authority, what you just said. And Luke, or excuse me, Matthew seven twenty nine. they were amazed at his doctrine for he taught them as one, one. that had the authority had and authority. not mm -hmm. as the scribes. Mm -hmm. Well, why did he have an authority the scribes didn't have? The scribes were under the law. He was under grace. And he was under grace. Mm -hmm. He was righteous. Yeah. Exactly. They had never so heard. They, they couldn't figure it out. Mm-mm. No. They couldn't get it. <laughs> I see the gears turning. All right. Anything <laughs> online? Okay. They're listening. All right. First Corinthians chapter 14. Now, as I've shared with you guys many times, um, when you read 1 Corinthians 14 and you, you, you read through about the first 20 verses, it's talking about your prayer language. But beginning about verse 20, 21, in there where he begins to quote from Isaiah, uh, the, it, there's a shift. At, from there on, he begins to talk about tongues in a public assembly and the interpretation, and then he begins to talk about prophets, ministry, and so on. Um, the point is that in the first part of this chapter and in the second part of this chapter, you're dealing with two different things. Two totally different things. But what we're about to read is going to deal with the prayer language. What a person receives when they're baptized in the Holy Spirit. All right. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. Follow after charity or love and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no one understands him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. So when you pray in tongues, and again, this is your prayer language. When you pray in tongues, you are not speaking to men you are speaking to God. All right? Now, go down to verse 13. <clears throat> verse 13. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Please take note. He did not say, let him that prays in an unknown tongue pray that he may translate. Pray that he may interpret. Translation deals with word for word. Interpretation deals with thought for thought. So, just hang on to that because I'm going to come back around to it in just a second. Because interpretation is not strictly what we thought it was. We have considered interpretation to be, uh, if not the translation, at least the uh, understandable communication of what was spoken in tongues. It can be that. It can be that. But not necessarily. All right, just... Hang on to that. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. And the word pray there is pray. <laughs> it's not the word wish. Let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue wish that he could interpret. Oh, I just oh, I wish I could interpret. Oh, I wish I could interpret my prayer language. That's not what he's saying. 
what he's saying is let him that prays in an unknown tongue pray. Keep praying. Keep praying in tongues that he may interpret. I'll come back to that. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Now, somebody says, <laughs> I heard you praying in tongues. This sounds like a bunch of gibberish to me. <laughs> well... Uh. First of all, again, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to God. You're not even supposed to understand it. Somebody said, well, when you're talking in tongues, do you know what you're saying? No, I don't. I have no clue. That's what Paul said here. He said, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. No, I don't know what I'm saying. And what if, my, if, if, you know, if Pentecostal charismatic people would be honest, sometimes when they're praying in tongues, it sounds like gibberish to them. Well, then just let me ask you a question. Oh, please do. <laughs> well now how do you know what you're saying is tongues how do you know you're praying in tongues by faith by faith I'm making those sounds by faith it takes faith to pray in the Holy Ghost. Jude 20. But you beloved. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you another reason I know I'm praying in tongues. Because the words are not coming out of my head. That's what Paul is saying here. But my understanding is unfruitful. I know it's tongues because it's not coming out of my head. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers, rivers of, of living, living water. water. It's coming up out of my spirit. What Paul said here, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, not my head. My spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Now, here's the thing. Jude 20 again. Let me give this back. Put this back up here. Ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Do I know what I'm saying? No. But what I'm praying, I am praying by faith, and I am praying beyond my intellect. That's what Paul said here. My understanding is unfruitful. But I'm speaking by faith faith produces righteousness righteousness empowers my words and empowered words produce answered prayer now the reason that it's called holy faith or most holy faith is because when you pray in the spirit you are praying in faith in such a way that it cannot be contaminated with your carnal thinking. It is most holy faith when you pray in the Holy Ghost. And since you pray in the Holy Ghost and it's by faith, faith produces righteousness, righteousness empowers your words, empowered words produce answered prayer. When you pray in the Spirit, a lot what I've learned to do years ago and I actually learned this from Brother Copeland he said when you pray in the spirit you don't know what you're saying but stop on occasion and give thanks Bishokoro da Braga Bishon de la Badabitia Borokoba Lord 
I don't know what I'm praying, but I know I'm praying your perfect will, your perfect plan. I'm praying in faith, and it is most holy faith, and so I just thank you for whatever I'm saying. Lord, I receive that, and I thank you for it. Lord, I thank you for that. I receive that, too. What are you receiving? I don't know yet. I need the interpretation. Stay with me. <laughs> Hold your place there in 1 Corinthians 14. Go to Romans chapter 8. <laughs> Don't lose your place. 1 Corinthians 14. We're coming right back. 9 says yielding. Uh, Robert Garcia, 30,000 baptized speaking in tongues reminds me what Jesus said about the greater works. Mm -hmm. The darkness understood it not. Mm -hmm. Of course, Robert was here Sunday, and so we got into those greater works. We'll talk about that next week. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. What do you pray? How do you pray when you don't know how to pray? Romans eight twenty six. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Literal Greek ta text says takes hold together with us against our infirmities or literally our inability to produce results. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for. Ever been there? We know not what we should pray for, but look at the next three words. As we Ought. <laughs> we know not what we should pray for as we ought. In other words, what you're praying in tongues, you should know it. You ought to know it. You have a right to know it. We know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart knows what is the mind or the plan of the Spirit. In other words, the Spirit of God prays the perfect will of God for you or for a situation as you pray in other tongues. And he that searches the heart knows what is the mind or the plan of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, you need to, you need to know this. This is going to become a theme text as we go into this study. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Stay with me. This is the confidence. Mm -hmm. Now, just as a side thought, the word confidence there is the Greek word that's translated all over the New Testament as the word boldness. This is the boldness. And when you take that Greek word and you break it down, it literally means liberty of speech. Let's just read it that way. This is the confidence and liberty of speech that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will. Well, one of the things we just read is that when we pray in other tongues, we are always praying the will of God. This is the confidence, the liberty of speech that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears Amen. us. Every Amen. time you pray in other tongues, Amen. God hears you. Amen. Every time God. you pray in the Spirit, God is hearing mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. 
We ask anything according to his will, he hears us. But here's the kicker. And we know that if he hears us, whatsoever we ask. Didn't say you had to understand it. Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have desired of him. Glory to God. Every time we pray in the Spirit, God always hears us when we pray in tongues. And if he hears us, then he always answers when we pray in the Spirit. Now, let's go back over to 1 Corinthians 14. First Corinthians 14, verse 13. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray. Just keep praying in the Spirit. Pray that he may interpret or Pray in tongues that you may interpret. Now again, it could be the interpretation of your tongue. <coughs> literally. Your prayer language. Literally. It could be that, but not necessarily so. But now here's what I want you to get. I don't know I, how long I've been reading these verses. I mean decades but I've never seen this. Now watch this. What is it then? Or what will I do? Or no, back for 14, I'm sorry. If I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. My spirit prays. When you pray in other tongues, where do the words come out of? they come out of your spirit by the Holy Ghost. If I pray in an unknown tongue, whose spirit prays? My spirit, my spirit prays, mm -hmm. but my understanding. understanding, my thinking processes, my understanding is unfruitful. But then in the next verse, he says, what is it then? What will I do? I will pray with the Spirit. And with the understanding also. Notice, the 14th verse, he says, I'll pray with my Spirit. My understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? What will I do? Well, he just told you in verse 13, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. What will I do? I'm praying in the Spirit. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm praying with my Spirit, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? What will I do? I'm going to keep praying with my Spirit. But as I continue praying with my spirit, I'll step over into the I'll step over into that realm of interpretation and I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding mm -hmm. also. What is that? That is the interpretation. Now let me, let me put it to you this way. Now watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord mm -hmm. with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. One of the best ways you fulfill that is by praying in the Holy Ghost. 
that trusting in the Lord is when you step out and begin to pray in tongues by faith and you're not leaning to your own understanding. You don't know what to pray. You don't know how to pray. You don't know what to do. But you're praying in the Spirit. But the good part is that when you pray in the Spirit, you're always praying the will of God. And when you pray the will of God, God always hears. And when Amen. He hears, He always answers. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Lord, I'm praying in the Spirit. Lord, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what to do. I'm in a situation. I don't know, I don't know which way to go, but I'm praying in the Spirit. I'm trusting in you with all of my heart, and I'm leaning not to my own understanding. And in all my ways, I'm acknowledging you. How? With thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. I received that. I thank you, Lord. I received that. I think thank you, Lord. I received that. You keep doing that in all your ways. Acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. He'll show you what to do. He'll show you what to say. He'll show you where to go. He'll show you what to do. He will answer your prayer. Amen. 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 I see the gears turning. It's powerful. So now how's he going to do that? He will give you the interpretation. Remember what we read? Jesus said it's the spirit that quickens there will be as you keep praying in other tongues there will be a quickening of the wisdom of God by the spirit a quickening oh oh this is what we're to do oh this is the direction we're to go oh this is what we're supposed to do. Now. Can I just insert. Sure. Here? Sure. It's not always. And I would venture to say. Most times. It's not. A mental. Knowing. No. You don't have a thought of. Oh this is what we're to do. As much as it is just in the spirit, you you know you're being maneuvered. You know you're being guided mm -hmm. and led and and properly mm -hmm. positioned. Well, the um, you know. One of the ways that quickening works, you know, we the, the world uses the terminology, you know, it just dawned on me. Mm -hmm. It just dawned on me. Well, Peter said, we have a more sure word of prophecy until the day dawn and the day star arises mm -hmm. in your heart. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that arising is a process, exactly like what you're taking, you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not. Sometimes it's a suddenly, but most mm -hmm. of the time, it is a gradual increase of light, just like the dawn. Mm -hmm. Light, or desire, mm -hmm. or just a yeah. And it is a thought mm -hmm. many times. Yeah. That's what makes it an interpretation. It mm -hmm. will be a thought. Like, for instance, um, when we went to Lincoln for Christmas. And on the day after Christmas, we had looked at the weather. And it was to start snowing uh, on that Thursday evening. This was on Wednesday. And 
the forecast was only three to five inches of snow. Mm -hmm. We discussed it with our hosts and said, you know, is there going to be a problem? And they said, no, 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 it never snows that much here. Uh, it'll snow all around us, but no, it'll, it, no, you're not going to have a problem. And both of us just had a thought that we needed to go ahead and leave on mm -hmm. Thursday. Yeah. And again, the hosts assured us, no, 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 it'll be fine. Stay through Friday like you're supposed to. But we had that thought, I think we need to go and it was, home. And it was continual. Yeah. And that's, that's one thing, too, is if one, of, one of the things about praying in the Spirit, if, if something like that is of God, the more you pray in the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. the stronger it gets on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. The more that it's, it's not God, it'll begin to dissipate. Right. And, and we sat in our room there for a while. We didn't pray hard. We didn't seek the Lord. We just kind of both just prayed in the Holy Ghost for a while. We were doing some reading and talking and praying the Holy Ghost a little bit, and you know. And we told the host um, that we would let them know the next morning for sure if we were leaving. Mm -hmm. At breakfast, we both knew, yeah, let's load up and go to the house. Yeah. And so we did and left there about noon. It started snowing there about sundown on Thursday. And we'd left about noon. So about six hours later, it began to snow. Mm -hmm. They got two foot of snow. All of the roads were closed. People were snowed in, could go nowhere for days. Mm -hmm. Well, see, we didn't have the word of the Lord come to us. It was just that gentle mm -hmm. nudging and maneuvering and just a thought. I think we should go on home Thursday. Mm -hmm. Let's just go on home. Mm -hmm. But that was the Spirit of God, and it came out of praying, praying in the Holy Spirit. Ghost. Mm -hmm. And it was a situation of we were having a ball there, mm -hmm. and in the natural really didn't want to come home. Right. We, we was, still wanted but, to stay. But when it was time just, to go, it was time to go. When it was time to go, we both knew it's time to go. Miss Trixie Joe is here. Hey, young lady. I'm um, glad you made it. She says, hi, everyone. I can't stay, but I wanted to stop in and thank you all for praying for my grandmother. She's resting so good today. Her body is getting a chance to heal. God is working all glory yes. to him. Amen. Yes, I prayed fervently in the spirit last night as we had to physically restrain my grandmother. I first received his peace last night. Then today, Grandma, is at peace. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Good, mm -hmm. good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Good report, Miss Trixie. Amen. Thank you. Yes, amen. <clears throat> we got anything online? Mm -mm, that okay. was it. All right. Let me share this with you. And uh, we'll uh, shut it off with this. Praying in the Spirit. What are you doing? Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 5 says, Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding of understanding I will pray with the spirit I will pray with the understanding the spirit and the understanding but a man of understanding will draw it out when you're praying in other tongues you have the counsel of God on the inside of you and by praying in the spirit just like a, a bucket going down into a well and bringing up water you are drawing up the counsel mm -hmm. of God mm -hmm. Colossians 2, 3, talking about Jesus, says, In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom mm -hmm. and knowledge. Well, where, are the, where is Jesus? He's in you, by the Holy Ghost. Proverbs 10, 11, listen to this one. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. Mm -hmm. But violence covers the mouth of the wicked. <clears throat> the first part of that verse, the mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. Back up in this chapter, let me share this with you and we'll be, we'll be done. Verse 5, well, verse 6. says, Now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? Now, if I just, we just sat here for two hours and just spoke in other tongues, you wouldn't get anything out of that. That wouldn't minister to you at all. 
you wouldn't understand what you were saying. Of course, neither would we. <laughs> but notice what he said. Now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except, he's about to give an exception here. Here's where tongues profit. Except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine or teaching. The wisdom will, be, will come up in one of those four ways. The interpretation of what you've been praying will come up in one of four of those ways. It will come up out of your spirit by revelation. <laughs> what is revelation? Revelation is an unveiling of something that you could not know other than by supernatural means. It is an uncovering or an unveiling where something is unveiled to you and you realize, oh, this is what I need to do. This is how I need to go. It's unveiled. And it deals with revelation. Revelation deals with, with uh, things that you did not have any clue about until that moment. Another, the second one is knowledge. Knowledge deals with uh, the Holy Ghost quickening something to you that you already know. But maybe you've passed over it. Um, I shared the illustration Sunday of... Uh, when we were looking for a building in San Angelo, and uh, this was in 1992, and we couldn't find a building. We had outgrown the building where we were. You could fit our whole church in the sanctuary of this, this uh, building, and we were cramming 100 people plus in that, that little space, and uh, we were looking for a building. Well, we went to this old ratty drug store that had been shut down, Lakeview Drug, out on North Chadburn, we went out there and looked at it and kind of went, oh, no. This no. can't be God. This, no, this couldn't mm -hmm. be it. It was just. <laughs> this is not it. Was, it. <laughs> it had been unoccupied for a long time. It was ratty. It was ragged out. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, that's not it. Well, anyway, <laughs> we went out to eat with a, with a couple. Uh, we'd looked at that building that day. We went out that night and we were talking about finding a building. They were part of our church. And the lady made the statement. She said, why don't we just get that building on Chadburn? And when she said it, it just, like Brother Hagin said, like the dime dropping into the payphone, it just dropped down into my spirit, and all of a sudden I just knew, that's it. Mm -hmm. that, that's the place. That's where we're supposed to go. And so we went in, remodeled, and all of that. And God did miracles, and that's another story. But... Um, I had the knowledge of that building, but I had mentally bypassed it. It was too ratty, too ragged out, just mm -hmm. no, too much needs to be done. And it just, no, that's not it. But when she asked that question, God quickened. God quickened. This is, this is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. He quickened it. Mm -hmm. Now, the third one here is prophesying. Now, you need to know about prophecy for just, let me read this verse of Scripture to you verse 3 says but he that prophesies speaks unto men to edification building up exhortation and comfort a lot of times i don't voice it out as a prophecy but this describes many times when the lord quickens something to me this describes what goes on on the inside many times uh when the lord uh gives me an interpretation of his purpose and his plan. On the inside of me, it comes up in the form of a prophecy, not a, thus saith the Lord, but it comes up in a sense of mm -hmm. assurance or exhortation mm -hmm. or uh, <clears throat> just kind of on the inside. Yeah, that's it. Um, we were still in a little bit of a, uncertainty for example where going to Romania was concerned we sat down uh, or we were going over to Bay Brady to eat and I called Verl on the phone and we start all started talking over the speaker and um, after our visit with him we had the assurance 
This is God. This is God. This is, this is what we need to do. So many times that, that quickening will come in the form of an assurance or an awareness. This is what we need to do. The last one here, and I want to share this with you because it, it happened to me today. And then we'll close it off with this. By doctrine or by teaching. Now, one of the things I is, is a teacher. But when you receive teaching from the Holy Spirit, and it just comes up, I tell you what, it's so much fun. Anyway, I said earlier, I don't know if Tina and Jake are still on or not, but uh, I said earlier, I was going to share something that I had shared with Tina. Now, Tina has been battling cancer for a good while. And we've been praying for her and believing God. And uh, I know she gets tired and she gets weary, but she has been battling this stuff and winning. Twelve years. Twelve years. And, you know, I mean... I She's mean, in a serious battle right talk, now. Yeah, and, but talk about, talk about standing in faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, she and Jake are standing with everything they've got. I mean, they are they are warriors, mm-hmm. and they're fighting. Well, anyway, uh, the Lord started dealing with Tina about some stuff, and she messaged Cindy, and Cindy uh, gave me uh, a copy of the message. <coughs> and basically, I... I don't have it word for it, but basically the Lord was dealing with her about seeking Him. Not so much about seeking the cure, seeking Mm -hmm. this and that and the other. And, of course, we've known Tina since she was 15. And she grew up on the Word. She grew up on the faith message. I mean, she, for years. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Cindy sent that to me. Cindy had shared a little bit with her, and then she sent me that copy. And and I was sitting there, and I thought, I read that, and I thought, what am I going to say to her? And the Lord began to quicken to me. And this was this is the Holy Ghost through doctrine, through teaching. What I needed to say to her, and it ministered to me, it ministered to all of us. Let me show you this. Go with me to Mark chapter five. <clears throat> this this comes from praying in the spirit seeing mm. things in the word like this comes from praying in the spirit now l- let me say this before we I read this because I want you to understand uh, God dealt with Tina about not seeking the cure, not seeking healing, but seeking Him. And that's confusing. I mean, when you've been standing and fighting for 12 years, it's like, you know, say what? <laughs> Verse 25 says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years. There you go. I didn't realize that. I just now read that and saw it. Twelve years. And had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse. And when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. Now, I know enough about, well, Jake and Tina both. But Tina's background, because she was in our church in Andrews. Tina knows about confession. She knows about standing on the word. She knows about believing. She makes her confessions of faith. I mean, on a consistent basis. 
She knows about that aspect of faith, of, of spiritual law. And the kingdom of God operates by spiritual law. There's no question for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Romans 3.27 talks about the law of faith. The kingdom of God operates by laws. How do we know that? Because God is a God of order. And in order to be a God of order, there has to be laws. And she's been standing, she's been using her faith, she's been confessing, she's been believing. And that's what this woman did. She believed in her heart. She said with her mouth. Now we don't know how long she did that. If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. But now watch this. And said, but if, she said, if I may touch his but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. Yea, God, go God. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue or power had gone out of him. She tapped into the power, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? The disciples said unto him, You see the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Now watch this, because there's about to be a shift. Watch. He said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole, Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Now, here is the, this came from praying in the spirit. This is being, this is where God drops teaching down inside your spirit. I told her in response, I said, and this was before the Lord gave me this. I said to her, we don't labor to get healed. We don't labor for deliverance. We don't labor to prosper. See, you can get so law conscious of, I got to make my confessions. I got to do this and I got to do that. You can become so law conscious that you're laboring, trying to get whatever it is. I said, the word says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into rest that's the only thing we're to labor into and i told her i said what the lord is trying to tell you is it's not a matter of trying to labor to get healed or get whatever it's a matter of laboring to come to that place of rest hebrews 4 3 says we which have believed past tense do enter into rest there is a point in your faith walk where you rest it's done mm -hmm. you rest and you rest in him mm -hmm. the mark of faith is peace how do you know if you have faith there's peace nothing may have changed circumstances may not have changed but in on the inside of you mm -hmm. you're at peace mm -hmm. Jesus said to this woman he said unto her daughter thy faith hath made thee whole go in peace you've exercised spiritual law the fountain of your blood was dried up but now listen, apparently there were other issues in her body that that issue of blood had produced. It had messed up everything in her body. On top of that, she was broke from spending all that she had at the doctor's. There was way more going on in her body 
than just that issue of blood. That issue of blood had produced a lot of different problems in her body. If it hadn't, Jesus wouldn't have said what he said. He said, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. The fountain of your blood is dried up. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. In other words, if you want the completion of this work, go in peace. And here's what the Lord, here's what the Holy Ghost brought out. I'd never seen this before. Listen, man, if you listen to God, he'll make you seem so smart. I never heard this before. <laughs> Holy Ghost, God's sense of sense of humor. He said, when she grabbed the hem of my garment, she was exercising spiritual law. But when she obeyed me and went away in peace, she was obeying me. She was exercising faith in me. It took more faith to walk away in peace than it did to grab the hem of that garment. And the, the thing the Lord showed me, and I got so tickled, the, the, the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, Jesus said through the Holy Ghost, He said, did you notice I didn't tell her to get down on her hands and knees and grab the hem of my garment again and let me drag her down the street? <laughs> well, that worked really well. Let's finish this out. Here, grab hold. I'm going to drag you down the road and God is going to finish the miracle. No. There had to be a shift in her. And the shift in her was from I'm believing and confessing, believing and confessing, believing and confessing, believing and confessing, believing and confessing. No, we had to believe to enter into rest. There was a shift on the inside of her where she went away in peace. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something about answered prayer. If we ask anything according to His will, this is the confidence that we have anything that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us, and if He hears us, we know mm -hmm. that we have the petitions that we have desired of Him. The knowing, the peace, is the proof that you have the answer. Your circumstances may not have changed. Your bank book hasn't changed. Your body hasn't changed. Nothing in the natural looks like it's changed. But on the inside of you, there is a sense of peace. Now you're not looking for the answer, the cure, the money, the this, the that. You are at peace in Him. And the answer is on the way. For I know whom. Yeah, that's it. Right I have there. believed. Not what. I know whom. Whom. That's it. I know whom I have believed. Yeah. And I am fully persuaded. Amen. There's your peace. That he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Yeah. And see, I didn't know that, what I just shared with you. I didn't know that from that scripture two minutes before I texted it to her. That is interpretation where the Holy Ghost is giving it through mm -hmm. teaching or doctrine. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you got something out of this. This is just the first installment, mm -hmm. if you will. And we will pick it up here and talk more about prayer and talk more about seeking God. And then we will get over into the wisdom part of it as we go. And I think you're going to find it interesting. Amen. Thank you all for being with us tonight. We appreciate Amen. it. Amen. Welcome back for 2019. Yes. Oh, it's going to be a good year. It it's is going to be a be blessed a really good year. year. Yes, it is. Um, we are blessed. Mm -hmm. And we're blessed to have this opportunity to join with y'all and you with us. And we're thankful. Yes. We're grateful. Amen. Thank you very much. Yes. yes. Amen. And Amen. as always, we're Thankful to have Monty and Beryl here. I don't think we told them y'all were here, but they are here. 
And Miss Yoda was so sweet all during. She was nice. All during Bible study. She didn't no. growl at anyone. She didn't bark. She didn't bite. No. <laughs> That's a miracle for a Chihuahua, mm -hmm. period. <laughs> oh, now she's waking now up. She's, she's shaking and stirring. Yeah. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord bless yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. The Lord, Lord bless you and keep you and give you peace. 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 In Jesus' In name. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you guys. We will see you next week. Next week. And we will deal more with prayer and wisdom. And pray in the Holy Ghost. Administration of the Spirit mm -hmm. and praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. We love you. Love y'all. Good bye night. Bye.